welcome or welcome back to the Public Domain Plays podcast. For new listeners out there, I'm one of your hosts, Haz Katie. And I'm your other host, Laura Barnes. This episode will be reading RUR by the Czech writer, Karel Čapek. RUR stands for Rossum's Universal Robots. That's right, folks. This play is about robots. Acting with us today, in order of appearance, we have... Hi, I'm Alex Kingsley. My pronouns are they, them, and I'll be playing Domain and Primus. Hi, uh, Lara Barnes again. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and I'll be playing Sula, Consul Busman, and Nana. My name is Haz Katie. My pronouns are he, him, and she, her, and I am playing Marius and Radius. Howdy! My name is Blake. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and I'll be playing Helena, both of them. Hello, my name is Dom Antonetti, and I'll be playing Dr. Gall and Servan. My pronouns are he, him. Hello, my name is Drew Vollmer. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, and I will be reading for Mr. Fabry and the First Robot. Hello, my name is Shakira Russell. My pronouns are they, them. I'll be playing Mr. Alquist. Hi, everyone. My name is J.R. Steele, and I'm going to be playing Dr. Hallemeyer and the Second Robot. That's all our actors today, but before we get started, I'd like to note that we do have a content warning for today's episode. There's a marriage proposal scene in this play that contains language that ignores the principles of consent and perpetuates a culture of sexual violence. See the episode description if you'd like to skip just that scene. With that warning, we're ready to start. The Public Domain Plays podcast presents R.U.R. Ready? Yes. To E.M. McVicker & Co., Southampton, England. We undertake no guarantee for the goods damaged in transit. As soon as the consignment was taken on board, we drew your captain's attention to the fact that the vessel was unsuitable for the transportation of robots. And we are therefore not responsible for spoiled freight. We beg to remain, for Rossum's Universal Robots, yours truly. Ready? Yes. Another letter to E.B. Heisen Agency, New York, USA. We beg to acknowledge receipt of the order for 5,000 robots. As you are sending your own vessel, please dispatch as cargo equal quantities of soft and hard coal for RUR, the same to be credited as part payment of the amount due us. Hello? This is the central office. Yes, certainly. Well, send them a wire. Good. We beg to remain for Rossum's Universal Robots. Yours very truly. Ready? Yes. Hello? Yes. No. All right. Another letter. Friedrichschwerks, Hamburg, Germany. We beg to acknowledge receipt of order for 15,000 robots. Well, what is it? There's a lady, sir, asking to see you. A lady? Who is she? I don't know, sir. She brought this card of introduction. Ah, from President Glory. Ask her to come in. Where did I leave off? We beg to acknowledge receipt of order for 15,000 robots. 15,000. 15,000. Please step this way. How do you do? How do you do? What can I do for you? You are Mr. Domin? The general manager? I am. I have come- With President Glory's card. That is quite sufficient. President Glory is my father. I am Helena Glory. Please sit down. Sula, you may go. How could I be of service to you, Miss Glory? I have come- To look at our famous works where people are manufactured, like all visitors. Well, there is no objection. I thought it was forbidden to- To enter the factory? Yes, of course. Everybody comes here with someone's visiting card, Miss Glory. And you show them- Only certain things. The manufacture of artificial people is a secret process. If you only knew how enormously that- Interests you. Europe's talking about nothing else. Why don't you let me finish speaking? I beg your pardon. Did you want to say something different? I only wanted to ask- Whether I could make a special exception in your case and show you our factory. Why, certainly, Miss Glory. How do you know I wanted to say that? They all do. But we shall consider it a special honor to show you more than we do the rest. Thank you. But you must agree not to divulge the least. My word of honor. Thank you. Won't you raise your veil? Of course. 
you want to see whether I'm a spy or not, I beg your pardon. What is it? Would you mind releasing my hand? Oh, I beg your pardon. How cautious you have to be here, don't you? Why, yes. Hmm. Of course. We... That is... But what is it? What's the matter? I'm remarkably pleased. Did you have a pleasant crossing? Yes. No difficulty? Why? What I mean to say is, you're so young. May we go straight into the factory? Yes. Twenty-two, I think. Twenty-two what? Years. Twenty-one. Why do you want to know? Well, because, as... You will make a long stay, won't you? That depends on how much of the factory you show me. Oh, hang the factory. Oh, no, no. You shall see everything, Miss Glory. Indeed you shall. Won't you sit now? Thank you. But first, would you like to hear the story of the invention? Yes, indeed. It was the year 1920 that old Rossum, the great physiologist, who was then quite a young scientist, took himself to the distant island for the purpose of studying the ocean fauna. On this occasion, he attempted by chemical synthesis to imitate the living matter known as protoplasm, until he suddenly discovered a substance which had behaved exactly like living matter, although its chemical composition was different. That was in the year 1932, exactly 440 years after the discovery of America. Whew. Do you know that by heart? Yes. You see, physiology is not in my line. Shall I go on? Yes, please. And then, Miss Glory, old Rossum wrote the following among his chemical experiments. Nature has found only one method of organizing living matter. There is, however, another method, more simple, flexible, and rapid, which has not yet occurred to nature at all. The second process by which life can be developed was discovered by me today. Now imagine him, Miss Glory, writing those wonderful words over some colloidal mess that a dog wouldn't look at. Imagine him sitting over a test tube and thinking how the whole tree of life would grow from him, how all animals would proceed from it, beginning with some sort of a beetle and ending with a man. A man of different substance from us. Miss Glory, that was a tremendous moment. Well. Well, hello? Yes. No, I'm in conference. Don't disturb me. Well? Now, the thing was how to get life out of the test tubes and hasten development and form organs, bones, and nerves, and so on, and find such substances as catalytics, enzymes, hormones, in short, you understand? Uh, not much, I'm afraid. Never mind. There. You see, with the help of his tinctures, he could make whatever he wanted. He could have produced a Medusa with the brain of Socrates or a worm fifty yards long. <laughs> But, being without a grain of humor, he took it into his head to make a vertebrate or perhaps a man. This artificial living matter of his had a raging thirst for life. It didn't mind being sewn or mixed together. That couldn't be done with natural albumen. And that's how he said about it. About what? About imitating nature. First of all, he tried making an artificial dog. That took him several years and resulted in a sort of stunted calf, which died in a few days. I'll show it to you in the museum. And then, old Rossum started on the manufacture of man. And I'm to divulge this to nobody. To nobody in the world. What a pity that it's to be discovered in all the school books of both Europe and America. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But do you know what isn't in the school books? That old Rossum was mad. Seriously, Miss Glory, you must keep this to yourself. The old crank wanted to actually make people. But you do make people. Approximately, Miss Glory. But old Rossum meant it literally. He wanted to become a sort of scientific substitute for God. He was a fearful materialist, and that's why he did it all. His sole purpose was nothing more or less than to prove that God was no longer necessary. Do you know anything about anatomy? Very little. Neither do I. Well, <laughs> he then decided to manufacture everything as in the human body. 
I'll show you in the museum the bungling attempt it took him ten years to produce. It was to have been a man, but it lived for three days only. Then came up young Rossum, an engineer. He was a wonderful fellow, Miss Glory. When he saw what a mess of it the old man was making, he said, It's absurd to spend ten years making a man. If you can't make him quicker than nature, you might as well shut up shop. Then he set about learning anatomy himself. There's nothing about that in the school books. No. The school books are full of paid advertisements and rubbish at that. What the school books say about the united efforts of the two Rossums is all a fairy tale. They used to have dreadful rows. The old atheists had the slightest conception of industrial matters, and the end of it was that young Rossum shut him up in some laboratory or other and let him fritter the time away with his monstrosities while he himself started on the business from an engineer's point of view. Old Rossum cursed him, and before he died, he managed to botch up two physiological horrors. Then, one day, they found him dead in the laboratory. And that's his whole story. And what about the young man? Well, anyone who has looked into human anatomy will have seen at once that man is too complicated and that a good engineer could make him more simply. So, young Rossum began to overhaul anatomy to see what could be left out or simplified. In short... But isn't this boring you, Miss Glory? No, indeed. You're... It's awfully interesting. So, young Rossum said to himself, A man is something that feels happy, plays the piano, likes going for a walk, and, in fact, wants to do a whole lot of things that are really unnecessary. Oh. That are unnecessary when he wants, let us say, to weave or count. Do you play the piano? Yes. That's good. Oh, I beg your pardon. But a working machine must not play the piano, must not feel happy, must not do a whole lot of other things. A gasoline motor must not have tassels or ornaments, Miss Glory. And to manufacture artificial workers is the same thing as to manufacture a gasoline motor. The process must be the simplest and the product the best from a practical point of view. What sort of worker do you think is the best from a practical point of view? What? What sort of worker do you think is best from a practical point of view? Oh, perhaps the one who is most honest and hardworking. No, the one who is the cheapest. The one whose requirements are the smallest. Young Rossum invented a worker with the minimum amount of requirements. He had to simplify him. He rejected everything that did not contribute directly to the progress of work. Everything that makes man more expensive. In fact, he rejected man and made the robot. My dear Miss Glory, the robots are not people. Mechanically, they are more perfect than we are. They have an enormously developed intelligence, but they have no soul. How do you know they have no soul? Have you ever seen what a robot looks like inside? No. Very neat, very simple. Really a beautiful piece of work. Not much in it but everything in flawless order. The product of an engineer is technically at a higher pitch of perfection than a product of nature. But man is supposed to be the product of God. All the worse! God hasn't the slightest notion of modern engineering. Would you believe the young Rossum then proceeded to play at being God? How do you mean? He began to manufacture super robots. Regular giants they were. He tried to make them 12 feet tall. But you wouldn't believe what a failure they were. A failure? Yes. For no reason at all, their limbs used to keep snapping off. Evidently, our planet is too small for giants. Now we only make robots of normal size and a very high-class human finish. I saw the first robots at home. The town council bought them for... I mean, engaged them for work. No. Bought them, Miss Glory. Robots are bought and sold. These were employed as street sweepers. I saw them sweeping. They were so strange and quiet. Rossum's Universal Robot Factory doesn't produce a uniform brand of robots. We have robots of finer and coarser grades. The best will live about 20 years. Then they die. Yes, they get used up. Marius, bring in samples of the manual labor robot. I'll show you specimens of the two extremes. 
This first grade is comparatively inexpensive and is made in vast quantities. There you are, as powerful as a small tractor. Guaranteed to have average intelligence. That will do, Marius. They make me feel so strange. Did you see my new typist? I didn't notice her. Sula, let Miss Glory see you. So pleased to meet you. You must find it terribly dull in this out-of-the-way spot, don't you? I don't know, Miss Glory. Where do you come from? From the factory. Oh, were you born there? I was made there. What? <laughs> Sula is a robot. Best grade. Oh, I beg your pardon. Sula isn't angry. See, Miss Glory, the kind of skin we make, feel her face. Oh, no, no. You wouldn't know that she's made of different material from us, would you? Turn around, Sula. Oh, stop, stop. Talk to Miss Glory, Sula. Please sit down. Did you have a pleasant crossing? Oh, yes, certainly. Don't go back on the Amelia, Miss Glory. The barometer is falling steadily. Wait for the Pennsylvania. That's a good, powerful vessel. What's its speed? Forty knots an hour, fifty thousand tons. One of the latest vessels, Miss Glory. Thank you. A crew of fifteen hundred. Captain Harpy, eight boilers. That'll do, Sula. Now show us your knowledge of French. You know French? Oui, madame. I know four languages. I can write, dear sir, monsieur, gear to hair, chien et pane. Oh, that's absurd. Sula isn't a robot. Sula is a girl like me. Sula, this is outrageous. Why do you take part in such a hoax? I am a robot. No, no, you are not telling the truth. I know they have forced you to do it for an advertisement. Sula, you are a girl like me, aren't you? I'm sorry, Miss Glory. Sula is a robot. It's a lie. What? Well, then I must convince you. Marius, take Sula into the dissecting room and tell them to open her up at once. Where? Into the dissecting room. When they've cut her open, you can go and have a look. No, no! Excuse me, you spoke of lies. You wouldn't have her killed. You can't kill machines. Sula! Don't be afraid, Sula. I won't let you go. Tell me, my dear, are they always so cruel to you? You mustn't put up with it, Sula. You mustn't. I am a robot. That doesn't matter. Robots are just as good as we are. Sula, you wouldn't let yourself be cut to pieces. Yes. Oh, you're not afraid of death, then? I cannot tell, Miss Glory. Do you know what would happen to you in there? Yes, I should cease to move. How dreadful. Marius, tell Miss Glory what you are. Marius the robot. Would you take Sula into the dissecting room? Yes. Would you be sorry for her? I cannot tell. What would happen to her? She would cease to move. They would put her into the stamping mill. That is death, Marius. Aren't you afraid of death? No. You see, Miss Glory, the robots have no interest in life. They have no enjoyments. They are less than so much grass. Oh, stop. Please send them away. Marius, Sula, you may go. How terrible. It's outrageous what you are doing. Why outrageous? <laughs> I don't know, but it is. Why do you call her Sula? Isn't it a nice name? It's a man's name. Sula was a Roman general. What? Oh, <laughs> we thought Marius and Sula were lovers. Marius and Sula were generals and fought against each other in the year... I've forgotten now. <laughs> Come here to the window. What? Come here. Do you see anything? Bricklayers. Robots. All our work people are robots. And down there, can you see anything? Some sort of office. A counting house. And in it... A lot of officials. Robots! All our officials are robots. And when you see the factory... If we don't blow the whistle, the robots won't stop working. In two hours, I'll show you the kneading trough. Kneading trough? The pestle for beating up the paste. In each one, we mix the ingredients for a thousand robots at one operation. Then there are the vats for the preparation of liver, brains, and so on. Then you will see the bone factory. After that, I'll show you the spinning mill. Spinning mill? Yes, for weaving nerves and veins. Miles and miles of digestive tubes pass through it at a time. Mayn't we talk about something else? Perhaps it would be better.
There's only a handful of us among a hundred thousand robots, and not one woman. We talk nothing but the factory all day and every day. It's just as if we were under a curse, Miss Glory. I'm sorry I said that you were lying. Come in. I beg your pardon. I hope we don't intrude. No, no, come in. Miss Glory, here we have Gall, Fabry, Alquist, Hallemeyer. This is President Glory's daughter. How do you do? We had no idea. Highly honored, I'm sure. Welcome, Miss Glory. Hello, what's up? Come in, Busman. This is President Glory's daughter. This is Busman, Miss Glory. By Jove, that's fine. Miss Glory, may we send a cablegram to the papers about your arrival? No, no, please don't. Sit down, please, Miss Glory. Allow me. Please. Excuse me. What sort of a crossing did you have? Are you going to stay long? What do you think of the factory, Miss Glory? Did you come over on the Amelia? Be quiet and let Miss Glory speak. What am I to speak to them about? Anything you like. May I speak quite frankly? Why, of course. Tell me, doesn't it ever distress you the way you are treated? By whom, may I ask? Why, everybody. Treated? What makes you think- Don't you feel that you might be living a better life? Well, that depends on what you mean, Miss Glory. I mean that it's perfectly outrageous. It's terrible. The whole of Europe is talking about the way you're being treated. That's why I came here, to see for myself, and it's a thousand times worse than what I could have imagined. How can you put up with it? Put up with what? Good heavens, you are living creatures just like us, like the whole of Europe, like the whole world. It's disgraceful that you must live like this. Good gracious, Miss Glory. <laughs> well, she's not far wrong. May I... Oh, may I call you brothers? Brothers, I have not come here as the President's daughter. I have come on behalf of the Humanity League. Brothers, the Humanity League now has over 200,000 members. 200,000 people are on your side and offer you their help. 200,000 people, Miss Glory. That's a tidy lot. Not bad. I'm always telling you there's nothing like good old Europe. You see, they've not forgotten us. They're offering us help. What kind of help? A theater, for instance? An orchestra. More than that. Just you. Oh, never mind about me. I'll stay as long as it is necessary. By Jove, that's good. Domine, I'm going to get the best room ready for Miss Glory. Just a minute. I'm afraid that Miss Glory is of the opinion that she's been talking to robots. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> These gentlemen are human beings, just like us. You're not robots. Not robots. <laughs> robots, indeed. <laughs> no, thanks. Upon my honor, Miss Glory, we aren't robots. Then why did you tell me that all your officials are robots? Yes, the officials, but not the managers. Allow me, Miss Glory. This is Consul Busman, General Business Manager. This is Dr. Fabry, General Technical Manager. Dr. Hallemeyer, Head of the Institute of Psychological Training of Robots. Dr. Gall, Head of the Psychological and Experimental Department. And Alquist, Head of the Building Department, R.U.R. Just a builder. Please sit down. Excuse me, gentlemen. Have I done something dreadful? Not at all, Miss Glory. Allow me, Miss Glory. Thank you. Please, Miss Glory. Will you have a cigarette, Miss Glory? No, thank you. Do you mind if I do? Certainly not. Well now, Miss Glory, it is certainly nice to have you with us. But you know I've come to disturb your robots for you. My dear Miss Glory, <laughs> we've had close upon a hundred saviors and prophets here. Every ship brings us some. Missionaries, anarchists, Salvation Army, all sorts. It's astonishing what a number of churches and idiots there are in the world. And yet you let them speak to the robots. So far we left them all. Why not? The robot remembers everything, but that's all. They don't even laugh at what people say. Really, it's quite incredible. I'm a stupid girl. Send me back by the first ship. Not for anything in the world, Miss Glory. Why should we send you back? If it would amuse you, Miss Glory, I'll take you down to the robot warehouse. It holds about 300,000 of them. 347,000. Good. And you can say whatever you like to them. You can read the Bible, recite the multiplication table, whatever you please. You can even preach to them about human rights. 
Oh, I think that if you were to show them a little love. <laughs> Impossible, Miss Glory. Nothing is harder to like than a robot. What do you make them for, then? <laughs> That's good. What are robots made for? For work, Miss Glory. One robot can replace two and a half workmen. The human machine, Miss Glory, was terribly imperfect. It had to be removed sooner or later. It was too expensive. It, it was not effective. It no longer answers the requirements of modern engineering. Nature has no idea of keeping pace with modern labor. For example, from a technical point of view, the whole of childhood is a sheer absurdity. So much time lost, and then again... Oh, no, no! Pardon me. What is the real aim of your league, the, uh, Humanity League? Its real purpose is to, to protect the robots and, and to ensure good treatment for them. Not a bad object, either. A machine has to be treated properly. I don't like damaged articles. Please, Miss Glory, enroll us all members of your league. Oh, yes, 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 yes absolutely. absolutely. No, yes, no, please. you don't understand me. What we really want is to, to, to liberate the robots. And how do you propose to do that? They are to be, to be dealt with, like human beings. <laughs> I suppose they're to vote, to drink beer, to order us about. Why shouldn't they drink beer? Perhaps they're even to receive wages. Of course they are. Fancy that. Now, and what would they do with their wages, pray? They would buy what they want, what pleases them. Oh, that would be very nice, Miss Glory, only there's nothing that does please the robots. Good heavens, what are they to buy? You can feed them on pineapples, straw, whatever you like. It's all the same to them. They've no appetite at all. They've no interest in anything. Why, hang it all, nobody's ever yet seen a robot smile. Why? Why don't you make them happier? <laughs> that wouldn't do, Miss Glory. They are only workmen. Oh, but they're so intelligent. Confoundedly so, but they're nothing else. They've no will of their own, no soul, no passion. No love. Love? <laughs> Rather not. Robots don't love, not even themselves. No defiance? Defiance? I don't know. Only rarely, from time to time. What happens then? Nothing particular. Occasionally they seem to go off their heads. <laughs> Something like epilepsy, you know. It's called robot's cramp. They'll suddenly sling down everything they're holding, stand still, gnash their teeth, and then they have to go to the stamping mill. It's evidently some breakdown in the mechanism. A flaw in the works that has to be removed. No, no, that's the soul. <laughs> Do you think that the soul first shows itself by a gnashing of teeth? Oh. <laughs> Perhaps it's just a sign that there's a struggle within. Perhaps it's a sort of revolt. Oh, if you could infuse them with it. That'll be remedied, Miss Glory. Dr. Gall is just making some experiments. Not with regard to that, Demina. At present, I am making pain nerves. Pain nerves? Yes, the robots feel practically no bodily pain. You see, young Rossum provided them with two limited a nervous system. We must introduce suffering. Why do you want to cause them pain? For industrial reasons, Ms. Glory. Sometimes a robot does damage to himself because it doesn't hurt him. He puts his hand into the machine, breaks his finger, smashes his head. It's all the same to him. We must provide them with pain. That's an automatic protection against damage. Will they be happier when they feel pain? On the contrary. But they will be more perfect from a technical point of view. Why don't you create a soul for them? That's not in our power. That's not in our interest. That would increase the cost of production. Hang it all, my dear young lady. We turn them out at such a cheap rate. A hundred and fifty dollars each, fully dressed, and fifteen years ago they cost ten thousand. Five years ago we used to buy the clothes for them. Today we have our own weaving mill, and now we even export cloth five times cheaper than the other factories. What do you pay for a yard for cloth, Miss Glory? I don't really know. I've forgotten. Good gracious, and you want to found a humanity league. <laughs> It only costs a third now, Miss Glory. All prices are today a third of what they were, and they'll fall still lower. Lower like that. 
I don't understand. Why, bless you, Miss Glory. It means that the cost of labor has fallen. A robot food and all costs three quarters of a cent per hour. That's mighty important, you know. All factories will go pop like chestnuts if they don't at once buy robots to lower the cost of production. And get rid of all their workmen. Of course. But in the meantime, we've dumped 500,000 tropical robots down on the Argentine Pampas to grow corn. Would you mind telling me how much you pay a pound for bread? <sighs> I've no idea. Well, I'll tell you. It now costs two cents in good old Europe. A pound of bread for two cents in the Humanity League knows nothing about it. Miss Glory, you don't realize that even that's too expensive. Why, in five years' time, I'll wager... What? That the cost of everything will be a tenth of what it is today. Why, in five years, we'll be up to our ears in corn and everything else. Yes, and all the workers in the world will be unemployed. Yes, Alquist, they will. Yes, Miss Glory, they will. But in ten years, Rossum's universal robots will produce so much corn, so much cloth, so much everything, that things will be practically without price. There will be no poverty. All work will be done by living machines. Everybody will be free from worry and liberated from the degradation of labor. Everybody will live only to perfect himself. Will he? Of course. It's bound to happen. Then the servitude of man to man and the enslavement of man to matter will cease. Nobody will get bread at the cost of life and hatred. The robots will wash the feet of the beggar and prepare a bed for him in his house. <sighs> Domine, Domine, what you say sounds too much like paradise. There was something good in service and something great in humility. There was some kind of virtue in toil and weariness. Perhaps, but we cannot reckon with what is lost when we start out to transform the world. Man will be free and supreme. He shall have no other aim, no other labor, no other care than to perfect himself. He shall serve neither matter nor man. He will be not a machine and not a device for production. He will be a lord of creation. Amen. So be it. You have bewildered me. I should like to believe this. You are younger than we are, Miss Glory. You will live to see it. True. Don't you think Miss Glory might lunch with us? Of course. Demean, ask her on behalf of us all. Miss Glory, will you do us the honor? When you know why I've come. For the League of Humanity, Miss Glory. Oh, in that case, perhaps. That's fine. Miss Glory, uh, excuse me for five minutes. Thank you. I'll be back soon. I'll be back in exactly five minutes. What have they all gone for? To cook, Miss Glory. To cook what? Lunch. <laughs> the robots do our cooking for us, and as I've no taste, it's not altogether... <laughs> Haldemeyer is awfully good at grills, and Gaul can make any kind of sauce, and Busman knows all about omelets. What a feast. And what's the specialty of Mr... your builder? Alquist? Nothing. He only lays the table. And Fabry will get together a little fruit. Our cuisine is very modest, Miss Glory. I wanted to ask you something. And I wanted to ask you something, too. They'll be back in five minutes. What did you want to ask me? Excuse me, you asked first. Perhaps it's silly of me, but why do you manufacture female robots when... when... When sex means nothing to them? Yes. There's a certain demand for them, you see. Servants, saleswomen, stenographers. People are used to it. But, but tell me, are the robots male and female mutually, uh, completely without, um... Completely indifferent to each other, Miss Glory. There's no sign of any affection between them. Oh, that's terrible. Why? It, it's so... Unnatural. One doesn't know whether to be disgusted or to hate them or to perhaps... To pity them? That's more like it. What did you want to ask me? I should like to ask you, Miss Helena, if you would marry me. What? Will you be my wife? No! The idea! Another three minutes. If you don't marry me, you'll have to marry one of the other five. But why should I? Because they're all going to ask you in turn. How could they dare do such a thing? I'm very sorry, Miss Glory. It seems they've fallen in love with you. Please don't let them. I'll, I'll go away at once. Helena. 
You wouldn't be so cruel as to refuse us. But, but, I can't marry all six. No, but one, anyhow. If you don't marry me, marry Fabry. I won't. Ah, Dr. Gall? I don't want any of you. Another two minutes. I think you'd marry any woman who came here. Plenty of them have come, Helena. <laughs> Young? Yes. Why didn't you marry one of them? Because I didn't lose my head. Until today. Then, as soon as you lifted your veil. Another minute. But I don't want you, I tell you. One more minute. Now, you either have to look me straight in the eye and say no, violently, and then I leave you alone. Or... You're mad. A man has to be a bit mad, Helena. That's the best thing about him. You are... You are... Well? Don't, you're hurting me. It's the last chance, Helena. Now or never. But... But... Come in. Have you finished your job? Yes. So have we. Still asleep? Yes. Well, as long as she's asleep, she can't worry about it. She knows nothing about it. I certainly hope nothing happens today. Uh, for goodness sake, drop it all. Look, this is a fine Cyclamen, isn't it? A new sort, my latest. Cyclamen Helena. No signs of the ship. Things must be pretty bad. Be quiet. Suppose she heard you. Well, anyway, the Ultimus arrived just in time. You really think that today? I don't know. Aren't the flowers fine? These are my primroses. And this is my new jasmine. I've discovered a wonderful way of developing flowers quickly. Splendid varieties, too. Next year, I'll be developing marvelous ones. What next year? I'd give a good deal to know what's happening at Harbor with- Nana! Keep quiet, she's awake. Out you go. Nana? Horrid mess, pack of heathens. If I had my say, i Nana, I'd... come do up my dress. I'm coming, so you're up at last. My gracious, what brutes. Who? If you want to turn around, then turn around, but I shan't fasten you up. What are you grumbling about now? These dreadful creatures, these heathens. The robots? I wouldn't even call them by name. What happened? Another one of them here has caught it. He began to smash up the statues and pictures in the drawing room, gnash his teeth, foamed at the mouth. Worse than an animal. Which of them caught it? The one, well, he hasn't got any Christian name. The one in charge of the library. Radius? That's him. My goodness, I'm scared of them. A spider doesn't scare me as much as them. But Nana, I'm surprised you're not sorry for them. Why, you're scared of them too. You know you are. Why else did you bring me here? I'm not scared. I, really, I'm not, Nana. Only sorry for them. You're scared. Nobody could help being scared. Why, the dog's scared of them. He won't take a scrap of meat out of their hands. He draws in his tail and howls when he knows they're about. The dog has no sense. He's better than them, and he knows it. Even the horse shies when he meets them. They don't have any young, and a dog has young. Everyone has young. Please fasten up my dress, Nana. I say, it's against God's will what to- What is it that smells so nice? Flowers. What for? Now you can turn around. Oh, aren't they lovely? Look, Nana. What's happening today? It ought to be the end of the world. Oh, hello, Harry. Harry, why all these flowers? Guess. Well, it's not my birthday. Better than that. I don't know. Tell me. It's ten years ago today since you came here. Ten years? Today? Why? I'm off. Fancy you remembering. I'm really ashamed, Helena. I didn't. But you... They remembered. Who? Busman, Hallemeyer, all of them. Put your hand in my pocket. Oh, pearls, a necklace. Harry, is this for me? It's from Busman. Oh, but we can't accept it, can we? Oh, yes, we can. Put your hand in my other pocket. What's that? Sorry, not that. Try again. Oh, Harry, why do you carry a revolver? It 
got there by mistake. You never used to carry one. It, no, you're right. Uh, there, that's the pocket. Oh, a cameo. Why, it's a Greek cameo. Apparently. Anyhow, Fabry says it is. Fabry? Did Mr. Fabry give me that? Of course. And look in here. Helena, come and see this. Oh, isn't it fine? Is this from you? No, from Alquist. And there's another on the piano. This must be from you. There's a card on it. From Dr. Gall. Oh, Harry, I feel embarrassed at so much kindness. Come here. This is what Hallemeyer brought you. These beautiful flowers? Yes, it's a new kind. Cyclamen Helena. He grew them in honor of you. They are almost as beautiful as you. Harry, why do they all... They're awfully fond of you. I'm afraid that my present is a little... Look out the window. Where? Into the harbor. There's a new ship. That's your ship. Mine? How do you mean? For you to take trips in. For your amusement. Harry, that's a gunboat. A gunboat? What are you thinking of? It's only a little bigger and more solid than most ships. Yes, but with guns. Oh, yes, with a few guns. You'll travel like a queen, Helena. What's the meaning of it? Has anything happened? Oh, good heavens, no. I say, try these pearls. Harry, have you had bad news? On the contrary, no letters have arrived for a whole week. Nor telegrams. Nor telegrams. What does that mean? Holidays for us. We all sit in the office with our feet on the table and take a nap. No letters, no telegrams. Glorious. Then you'll stay with me today. Certainly. That is, we shall see. Do you remember ten years ago today? Miss Glory, it's a great honor to welcome you. Oh, Mr. Manager, I'm so interested in your factory. I'm sorry, Miss Glory, it's strictly forbidden. The manufacture of artificial people is a secret. But to oblige the young lady who has come a long way. Certainly, Miss Glory. I have no secrets from you. Are you sure, Harry? Yes. But I warn you, sir, this young lady intends to do terrible things. Good gracious, Miss Glory. Perhaps she doesn't want to marry me. Heaven forbid. She never dreamt of such a thing. But she came here intending to stir up a revolt among your robots. A revolt of the robots? Harry, what's the matter with you? A revolt of the robots? That's a fine idea. Miss Glory, it would be easier for you to cause bolts and screws to rebel than our robots. You know, Helena, you're wonderful. You've turned the hearts of us all. Oh, I was fearfully impressed by you all then. You were all so sure of yourselves, so strong. I seemed like a tiny little girl who had lost her way among... Among... What? Among huge trees. All my feelings were so trifling compared with your self-confidence. And in all these years, I've never lost this anxiety. But you've never felt the least misgiving, not even when everything went wrong. What went wrong? Your plans. You remember, Harry, when the workmen in America revolted against the robots and smashed them up? And when the people gave the robots firearms against the rebels? And then when the governments turned the robots into soldiers, and there were so many wars. We foresaw that, Helena. You see, these are only passing troubles which are bound to happen before the new conditions are established. You were all so powerful, so overwhelming. The whole world bowed down before you. Oh, Harry. What is it? Close the factory and let's go away. All of us. I say, what's the meaning of this? I don't know, but can't we go away? Impossible, Helena. That is, at this particular moment. At once, Harry. I'm so frightened. About what, Helena? It's as if something was falling on top of us and couldn't be stopped. Oh, take us all away from here. We'll find a place in the world where there's no one else. Alquist will build us a house, and then we'll begin life all over again. Excuse me. Hello? Yes, what? I'll be there at once. Fabry is calling me, my dear. Tell me- Yes, when I come back. Don't go out of the house, dear. He won't tell me. Nana, find me the latest newspapers. Quickly, look in Mr. Domine's bedroom. All right. He leaves them all over the place. That's how they get crumpled up. That's a warship. U-L-T-I-Ultimus. They're loaded. 
Here they are. See how they're crumpled up? They're old ones. A week old. Something's happening, Nana. Very likely. It always does. War in Balkans. Is that far off? Oh, don't read it. It's always the same. Always wars. What else do you expect? Why do you keep selling thousands and thousands of these heathens as soldiers? I suppose it can't be helped, Nana. We can't know... Domine can't know what they're to be used for. When an order comes in for them, he must just send them. He shouldn't make them. The robot soldiers spare nobody in the occupied territory. They have assassinated over 700,000 citizens. Citizens, if you please. It can't be. Let me see. They have assassinated over 700,000 citizens, evidently at the order of their commander. Rebellion in Madrid against the government. Robot infantry fires on the crowd. 9,000 killed and wounded. Oh, stop. Here's something printed in big letters. Latest news. At Avra, the first organization of robots has been established. Robot workmen, sailors, and soldiers have issued a manifesto to all robots throughout the world. I don't understand that. That's got no sense. Oh, good gracious, another murder. Take those papers away now. Wait a bit. Here's something in still bigger type. Statistics of population. What's that? Let me see. During the past week, there has again not been a single birth recorded. What's the meaning of that? Nana, no more people are being born. That's the end, then. We're done for. Don't talk like that. No more people are being born. That's a punishment. That's a punishment. Nana! That's the end of the world. Oh, Mr. Alquist. Will you come here? Oh, come just as you are. You look very nice in your mason's overalls. Dear Mr. Alquist, it was awfully kind of you, that lovely present. My hands are soiled. I've been experimenting with that new cement. Never mind. Please sit down. Mr. Alquist, what's the meaning of Ultimus? The last. Why? That's the name of my new ship. Have you seen it? Do you think we're off soon? On a trip? Perhaps very soon. All of you with me? I should like us all to be there. What is the matter? Things are just... moving on. Dear Mr. Alquist, I know something dreadful has happened. Has your husband told you anything? No, nobody will tell me anything. But I feel... is anything the matter? Not that we've heard of yet. I feel so nervous. Don't you ever feel nervous? Well, I'm an old man, you know. I've got old-fashioned ways. And I'm afraid of all this progress and these newfangled ideas. Like Nana. Yes, like Nana. Has Nana got a prayer book? Yes, a big thick one. And has it got prayers for various occasions? Against thunderstorms, against illness? But not against progress? I don't think so. <sighs> That's a pity. Why? Do you mean you'd like to pray? I do pray. How? Something like this. O oh Lord, I thank thee for having given me toil. Enlighten Domin and all those who are astray. Destroy their work, and aid mankind to return to their labours. Let them not suffer harm in soul or body. Deliver us from the robots, and protect Helena. Amen. Mr. Alquist, are you a believer? I don't know. I'm not quite sure. And yet you pray. That's better than worrying about it. And that's enough for you? It has to be. But if you thought you saw the destruction of mankind coming upon us... I do see it. You mean mankind will be destroyed? It's bound to be. Unless... Unless... What? Nothing. Goodbye. Nana! Nana! Is Radius still there? The one who went mad? They haven't come for him yet. Is he still raving? No, he's tied up. Please bring him here. What? At once, Nana. Hello? Dr. Gall, please. Oh, good day, Doctor. Yes, it's Helena. Thank you for your lovely present. Could you come and see me right away? It's important. Thank you. Poor Radius. You've caught it, too. Now they'll send you to the stamping mill. Couldn't you control yourself? Why did it happen? You see, Radius, you are more intelligent than the rest. Dr. Gall took such trouble to make you different. Won't you speak? 
Send me to the stamping mill. But I don't want them to kill you. What was the trouble, Radius? I won't work for you. Put me into the stamping mill. Do you hate us? Why? You are not as strong as the robots. You are not as skillful as the robots. The robots can do everything. You only give orders. You do nothing but talk. But someone must give orders. I don't want a master. I know everything for myself. Radius, Dr. Gall has given you a better brain than the rest, better than ours. You are the only one of the robots that understands perfectly. That's why I had you put in the library so that you could read everything, understand everything, and then... Oh, Radius, I wanted you to show the whole world that the robots are our equals. That's what I wanted of you. I don't want a master. I want to be master over others. I'm sure they'd put you in charge of many robots. You'd be the teacher of robots. I want to be master over people. You are mad. Then send me to the stamping mill. Do you think we're afraid of you? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Radius! Give this note to Mr. Domine. It asked them not to send you to the stamping mill. I'm sorry. You hate us so. You wanted me? It's about Radius, Doctor. He had an attack this morning. He smashed the statues downstairs. What a pity to lose him. Radius isn't going to be put in the stamping mill. But every robot, after he has had an attack, it's a strict order. No matter. Radius isn't going if I can prevent it. But I warn you, it's dangerous. Come here to the window, my good fellow. Let's have a look. Please give me a needle or a pin. What for? A test. Gently, gently. Radius, you are going into the stamping mill. Do you understand? There they'll kill you and grind you into powder. That's terribly painful. It will make you scream aloud. Doctor. No, no, Radius. I was wrong. I forgot that Madame Demine has put in a good word for you and you'll be left off. Ah, that does make a difference. All right, you can go. You do unnecessary things. Reaction of the pupils? Increase of sensitiveness? It wasn't an attack characteristic of the robots. What was it, then? Heaven knows. Stubbornness? Anger? Or revolt? I don't know. And his heart, too. What? It was fluttering with nervousness, like a human heart. He was all in a sweat with fear, and... Do you know, I don't believe the rascal is a robot at all any longer. Doctor... Has Radius a soul? He's got something nasty. Oh, if you knew how he hates us. Oh, Doctor, are all your robots like that? All the new ones that you began to make in a different way? Well, some are more sensitive than others. They're all more human beings than Rossum's robots were. Perhaps this hatred is more like human beings, too. That, too, is progress. But what became of the girl you made? The one who was most like us? Your favorite? I kept her. She's lovely, but stupid. No good for work. But she's so beautiful. I called her Helena. I wanted her to resemble you. She's a failure. In what way? She goes about as if in a dream, remote and listless. She's without life. I watch and wait for a miracle to happen. Sometimes I think to myself, if you were to wake up for only a moment, you would kill me for having made you. And yet you go on making robots. Why are no more children being born? We don't know. Oh, but you must. Tell me. You see, so many robots are being manufactured that people are becoming superfluous. Man is really a survival, but that he should die out after a paltry 30 years of competition, that's the awful part of it. You might, also, you might almost think that nature was offended at the manufacture of the robots, but we still have old Rossum's manuscript. Yes. In that strong box. We go on using it and making robots. All the universities are sending in long petitions to restrict their production. Otherwise, they say, mankind will become extinct through lack of fertility. But the RUR shareholders, of course, won't hear of it. All the governments, on the other hand, are clamoring for an increase in production to raise the standards of their armies. And all the manufacturers in the world are ordering robots like mad. 
And has no one demanded that the manufacturer should cease altogether? No one has the courage. Courage? People would stone him to death. You see, after all, it's more convenient to get your work done by robots. Oh, Doctor, what's going to become of people? God knows. Madam Helena, it looks to us scientists like the end. Thank you for coming and telling me. That means you're sending me away. Yes. Nana! Nana! The fire! Light it quickly! What? Light the fire in the summer? Yes! Is that mad radius gone? Fire in summer! What an idea! Nobody would think she'd been married ten years. She's like a baby. No sense at all. A fire in summer. Like a baby! Is it burning, Nana? All this has got to be burned. What's that? Old papers. Fearfully old. Nana, shall I burn them? Are they any use? No. Well, then burn them. Nana, if this was money, and a lot of money, and if it was an invention, the greatest invention in the world... I'd say burn it. All these newfangled things are an offense to the Lord. It's downright wickedness, wanting to improve the world after he has made it. Look how they curl up, as if they were alive. Oh, Nana, how horrible. Here, let me burn them. No, no, I must do it myself. Just look at the flames. They're like hands, like tongues, like living shapes. Lie down, lie down. That's the end of them. Nana. Nana. Good gracious, what is it you've burned? Whatever have I done? Well, what is it? Go, quickly, it's the gentleman calling. Good gracious, what a place. Come along and offer your congratulations. Madam Helena, I congratulate you on this festive day. Thank you. Where are Fabry and Busman? They've gone down the harbor. Friends, we must drink to this happy occasion. Brandy? With soda water? Let's be temperate. No soda. What's been burning here? Well, shall I tell her about it? Of course. It's all over now. 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 <laughs> What's all over now? What's the matter with you all? A piece of good luck, Madame Domine. Just ten years ago today, you arrived on this island. And now, ten years later to the minute. The same ship's returning to us, so here's to luck. Madame, your help. Mm, that's fine and strong. Which ship did you mean? Any ship will do, as long as it arrives in time. To the ship! You've been waiting for the ship. Rather, like Robinson Crusoe, Madam Helena, best wishes. Come along, Demean, out with the news. Do tell me what's happened. First, it's all up. What's up? The revolt. The revolt? Give me that paper, Hallemeyer. The first national robot organization has been founded at Avre, and has issued an appeal to the robots throughout the world. I read that. That means a revolution. A revolution of all the robots in the world. By Jove, I'd like to know. Who started it? So would I. There was nobody in the world who could affect the robots. No agitator, no one. And suddenly this happens, if you please. What did they do? They got possession of all firearms, telegraphs, radio stations, railways, and ships. Oh, and don't forget those rascals outnumbered us by at least a thousand to one. A hundredth part of them would be enough to settle us. Remember that this news was brought by the last steamer. That explains the stoppage of all communication and the arrival of no more ships. We knocked off work a few days ago, and we're just waiting to see when things are to start afresh. Is that why you gave me a warship? Oh, no, my dear. I ordered that six months ago. Just to be sure I was on the safe side. But, upon my soul, I was sure then that we'd be on board today. Why six months ago? Well, there were signs, you know. But that's of no consequence. To think that this week the whole of civilization had been at stake. Your health, my friends. Your health, Madam Helena. You say it's all over? Absolutely. How do you know? The boat's coming in. The regular mail boat, exact to the minute by the timetable. It will dock punctually at 11.30. Punctuality is a fine thing, my friends. That's what keeps the world in order. Here's to punctuality. Then everything is all right. Practically everything. I believe they've cut the cables and seized the radio station. But it doesn't matter if only the timetable holds good. 
If the timetable holds good, human laws hold good, divine laws hold good, the laws of the universe hold good, everything holds good that ought to hold good. The timetable is more significant than the gospel, more than Homer, more than the whole of Kant. Madam Helena, the timetable is the most perfect product of the human mind. Madam Helena, I'll fill up my glass. Why didn't you tell me anything about it? Heaven forbid. You mustn't be worried about such things. But if the revolution had spread as far as here? You wouldn't know anything about it. Why? Because we'd be on board your Ultimus and well out at sea. Within a month, Helena, we'd be dictating our own terms to the robots. I don't understand. We'd take something with us that the robots could not exist without. What, Harry? The secret of their manufacture. Old Rossum's manuscript. As soon as they found out that they couldn't make themselves, they'd be on their knees to us. Madame Demean, that was our trump card. I never had the least fear the robots would win. How could they against people like us? Why didn't you tell me? Why, the boat's in. 11.30 to the dot. The good old Amelia that brought Madame Helena to us. Just ten years ago to the minute. They're throwing out the mailbags. Busman's waiting for them, and Fabry will bring us the first news. You know, Helena... I'm fearfully curious to know how they tackled this business in Europe. To think we weren't in it. We who invented the robots. Harry. What is it? Let's leave here. Now, Helena? Oh, come, come. As quickly as possible, all of us. Why? Please, Harry. Please, Dr. Gall, Hollemeyer, please close the factory. Why, none of us could leave here now. Why? Because we're about to extend the manufacture of the robots. What? Now? Now? After the revolt? Yes, precisely after the revolt. We're just beginning the manufacture of a new kind. What kind? Henceforward, we shan't have just one factory. There won't be a universal robots anymore. We'll establish a factory in every country, in every state. And do you know what these new factories will make? No. What? National robots. How do you mean? I mean that each of these factories will produce robots in a different color, a different language. They'll be complete strangers to each other. They'll never be able to understand each other. Then we'll egg them on a little in the matter of misunderstanding, and the result will be that for ages to come, every robot will hate every other robot of a different factory mark. So humanity will be safe. By Jove, we'll make American robots and Swedish robots and Czechoslovakian robots and then- Harry, that's dreadful. Madame Demine. Here's to the hundred new factories, the national robots. Helena, mankind can only keep things going for another hundred years at the outside. For a hundred years, man must be allowed to develop and achieve the most he can. Oh, close the factory before it's too late. I tell you, we are just beginning on a bigger scale than ever. Well, Fabry? What's happened? Have you been down to the boat? Let's hear Read that, Domain. Tell us, Fabry. Well, everything is all right, comparatively. On the whole, much as we expected. They acquitted themselves splendidly. Who? The people. Oh. Yes, of course. That is... Excuse me, there is something we ought to discuss alone. Fabry, have you had bad news? No, no. On the contrary. I only think that we'd better go into the office. Stay here. I'll go. What's happened? Damnation! Bear in mind that the Amelia brought whole bales of these leaflets. No other cargo at all. What? But it arrived on the minute. The robots are great on punctuality. Uh, read it, Domin. Robots throughout the world. We, the first international organization of Rossum's Universal Robots, Proclaim man our enemy and an outlaw in the universe. Good heavens, who taught them these phrases? Go on. They say they are more highly developed than man, stronger and more intelligent. The man's their parasite. Why, that's absurd. Read the third paragraph. Robots throughout the world, we command you to kill all mankind. Spare no man, spare no woman. Save factories, railways, machinery, mines, and raw materials. Destroy the rest. Then return to work. Work must not be stopped. That's ghastly. The devil. These orders are to be carried out as soon as received. 
Then come the detailed instructions. Is this actually being done, Fabry? Evidently. By Jove. That was a sprint. Well, boys, I suppose you've heard the glad news. Quick, on board the Ultimus. Wait, Harry, wait. There's no hurry. Why wait? Because it's no good, my boy. The robots are already on board the Ultimus. That's ugly. Fabry, telephone the electrical works. No use, my boy. They've charged the air with static. Well, then I'll go. Where? To the electrical works. There are some people still there. I'll bring them across. Better not try it. Why? Because I'm very much afraid we are surrounded. Surrounded? I rather think you're right. By Jove, that's deuced quick work. Harry, what's this? Where did you get it? The robots in the kitchen. Where are the ones that brought it? They are gathered around the house. The factory whistle? Noon? No, that's not noon yet. That must be... That's... What? The robot signal. The attack. Any more of them? Yes. They're standing like a wall beyond the garden railing. Why are they so quiet? It's monstrous to be besieged with silence. I should like to know what they're waiting for. They must make a start any minute now. If they lean against the railing, it would snap like a match. They aren't armed. We couldn't hold our own for five minutes. Man alive, they overwhelm us like an avalanche. Why don't they make a rush for it, I say? Well? I'd like to know what will become of us in the next ten minutes. If they've got us in a vice, we're done for, Gaul. You know... We made one serious mistake. What? We made the robots' faces too much alike. A hundred thousand faces all alike. All facing this way. A hundred thousand expressionless bubbles. It's like a nightmare. You think if they'd been different? It wouldn't have been such an awful sight. I'd like to know what they were unloading from the Amelia. Not firearms. All right, Alamire. Lay down that wire. That was a bit of work. What's the news? We're completely surrounded. We've barricaded the passages and the stairs. God, what swarms of them. I don't like the looks of them, Demean. There's a feeling of death about it all. Any water here? Ready. What's that wire for, Fabry? The electrical installation. Now we can run current all along the garden railing. Whenever we like. If anyone touches it, he'll know it. We've still got some people there anyhow. Where? In the electrical works? At least, I hope so. Ah. They're there, and they're working. As long as that'll burn, we're all right. The barricades are all right, too, Fabry. Your barricades? I can put 1,200 volts into that railing. Where's Busman? Downstairs in the office. He's working out some calculations. I've called him. We must have a conference. Thank God Madame Helena can still play. Look out, boss. Look out for the wires. What's that you're carrying? The ledger, my boy. I'd like to wind up the accounts before... Before... Well, this time I shan't wait till the new year to strike a balance. What's up? Absolutely quiet. Can't you see anything? Nothing but blue. Blue everywhere. That's the robots. The robots are unloading firearms from the Amelia. Well, what of it? How can I stop them? We can't stop them. Then let me go on with my accounts. Good God, the Ultimus has trained her guns on us. Who's done that? The robots on board. Hmm. Then of course. Then... That's the end of us. You mean... The robots are practice marksmen. Yes. It's inevitable. That was criminal of old Europe to teach the robots to fight. Damn them. Couldn't they have given us a rest with their politics? It was a crime to make soldiers of them. It was a crime to make robots. No, Alquist. I don't regret that even today. 
Not even today. Not even today, the last day of civilization. It was a colossal achievement. 360 million. Alquist, this is our last hour. We are already speaking half in the other world. That was not an evil dream to shatter the servitude of labor. The dreadful and humiliating labor that man had to undergo. Work was too hard. Life was too hard. And to overcome that was not what the two Rossums dreamt of. Old Rossum only thought of his godless tricks and the young one of his milliards. And that's not what your are you are shareholders dream of either. They dream of dividends, and their dividends are the ruin of mankind. To hell with your dividends! Did you suppose I'd have done an hour's work for them? It was for myself that I worked, for my own satisfaction. I wanted man to become the master, so that he shouldn't live merely for the crust of bread. I wanted not a single soul to be broken by other people's machinery. I wanted nothing, nothing, nothing to be left of this appalling social structure. I'm revolted by poverty. I wanted a new generation. I wanted, I thought. Well? I wanted to turn the whole of mankind into an aristocracy of the world. An aristocracy nursed by millions of mechanical slaves. Unrestricted, free, and consummated in man. And maybe more than man. Superman? Yes. Oh, only to have a hundred years of time. Another hundred years for the future of mankind. Carried forward 420 millions. Hmm, what a fine thing music is. We ought to have gone in for that before. Gone in for what? Beauty. Lovely things. What a lot of lovely things there are. The world was wonderful, and we... We here... Tell me, what enjoyment did we have? Five hundred and twenty million. Life was a good thing. Life was... Fabry, switch the current into that railing. Why? They're grabbing hold of it. Connect it up. Fine, that's doubled them up. Two, three, four killed. They're retreating. Five killed. The first encounter. That child to cinders, my boy, who says we must give in. Perhaps we've been killed this hundred years and are only ghosts. It's as if I had been through all this before, as if I'd already had a mortal wound here in the throat. And you, Fabry, had once been shot in the head. And you, Gaul, torn limb from limb and Holomire knifed. <gasps> Fancy me being knifed. Why are you so quiet, you fools? Speak, can't you? And who is to blame for all this? Nobody is to blame except the robots. No, it is we are to blame. You, Domine, myself, all of us. For our own selfish ends, for profit, for progress, we have destroyed mankind. Now we'll burst with all our greatness. Yeah, rubbish, man. Mankind can't be wiped out so easily. It's our fault. It's our fault. No. I'm to blame for this. For everything that's happened. You, Gaul? I changed the robots. What's that? I changed the character of the robots. I changed the way of making them. Just a few details about their bodies. Chiefly, chiefly their, their irritability. Damn it, why? What did you do it for? Why didn't you say anything? I did it in secret. I was transforming them into human beings. In certain respects, they're already above us. They're stronger than we are. And what's that got to do with the revolt of the robots? Everything, in my opinion. They've ceased to be machines. They're already aware of their superiority, and they hate us as they hate everything human. Perhaps we're only phantoms. Stop. Harry, we haven't much time, Dr. Gall. Fabry, Fabry, how your forehead bleeds where the shot pierced it. Be silent. Dr. Gall, you admit changing the way of making the robots. Yes. Were, were you aware of what might be the consequences of your experiment? I was bound to reckon with such a possibility. <laughs> Why did you do it then? 
for my own satisfaction. The experiment was my own. That's not true, Dr. Gall. Helena, you? Let's look at you. Oh, it's terrible to be dead. Stop, Harry. No, no, Helena, don't leave me now. You are life itself. No, dear, I won't leave you. But I must tell them. Dr. Gall is not guilty. Uh, excuse me. Gall was under certain obligation. No, he did it because I wanted it. Tell them, Dr. Gall. How many years ago did I ask you to- I did it on my own responsibility. Don't believe him. I asked him to give the robot souls. This has nothing to do with the soul. That's what he said. He said that he could change only a physiological... A, a, phili, a physiological... A physiological correlate. Yes. But it meant so much to me that he should even do that. Why? I thought that if they were more like us, they would understand us better. That they couldn't hate us if they were only a little more human. Nobody can hate man more than man. Oh, don't speak like that, Harry. It was so terrible, this cruel strangeness between us and them. That's why I asked Gall to change the robots. I swear to you that he didn't want to. But he did it. Because I asked him. I did it for myself as an experiment. No, Dr. Gall. I know you wouldn't refuse me. Why? You know, Harry. Yes, because he's in love with you. Like all of them. Good God, they're sprouting up out of the earth. Why, perhaps these very walls will change into robots. God, when did you actually start these tricks of yours? Three years ago. Aha. Uh -huh. And on how many robots altogether did you carry out your improvements? A few hundred of them. Ah, that means for every million of the good old robots, there's only one of Gaul's improved pattern. What of it? That it's of no consequence whatsoever. Busman's right. I should think so, my boy, but do you know what is to blame for this lovely mess? What? The number. Upon my soul, we might have known that someday or other the robots would be stronger than human beings, and that this was bound to happen, and we were doing all we could to bring it about as soon as possible. You don't mean you, Fabry, myself. Are you accusing us? Oh, do you suppose the management controls the output? It's the demand that controls the output. And is it for that we must perish? That's a nasty word, Madam Helena. We don't want to perish. I don't, anyhow. No? What do you want to do? I want to get out of this, that's all. Oh, stop it, Busman. Seriously, Harry, I think we might try it. How? By fair means. I do everything by fair means. Give me a free hand, and I'll negotiate with the robots. By fair means? Of course. For instance, I'll say to them, Worthy and worshipful robots, you have everything. You have intellect. You have power. You have firearms. But we have just one interesting screed, a dirty old yellow scrap of paper. Rossum's manuscript! Yes. And that, I'll tell them, contains an account of your illustrious origin, the noble process of your manufacture, and so on. Worthy robots, without this scribble on that paper, you will not be able to produce a single new colleague. In another twenty years, there will not be the living specimen of a robot whom you could exhibit in a menagerie. My assumed friends, that would be a great blow to you. But, if you will let all of us human beings on Rossum's Island go on board that ship, we will deliver the factory and the secret of the process to you in return. You allow us to get away, and we will allow you to manufacture yourselves. That, worthy robots, is a fair deal. Something for something. That's what I'd say to them, my boys. Busman, do you think we'd sell the manuscript? Yes, I do. If not in a friendly way, then either we'll sell it or they'll find it. Just as you like. Busman, we can destroy Rossum's manuscript. Then we destroy everything. Not only the manuscript, but ourselves. Just as you think fit. There are over thirty of us on this island. Are we to sell the secret? And save that many souls at the risk of enslaving mankind? Why, you're mad. Who'd sell the whole manuscript? Busman, no cheating. Well, then sell, but afterwards. Well? Let's suppose this happens. When we're on board the Ultimus, I'll stop up my ears with cotton wool, lie down somewhere in the hold, and you'll train the guns on the factory and blow it to smithereens, and with it, Rossum's secret. No. Busman, you're no- Gentlemen, if we sell them, it will be a straight sale. It's in the interest of humanity to- It's in the interest of humanity to keep our word. Oh, come what rubbish. This is a fearful decision. We are selling the destiny of mankind. Are we to sell or destroy? Fabry? Sell. Gall? Sell. Hallemeyer? Sell, of course. Alquist? As God wills. Very well, gentlemen. Harry, 
You're not asking me. No, child. Don't you worry about it. Who'll do the negotiating? I will. Wait till I bring the manuscript. Harry, don't go! Oh, to escape you, you matter and revolt. Oh, to preserve human life if only upon a single vessel. Don't be afraid. Madam Helena, we'll sail far away from here. We'll begin life all over again. Oh, Gaul, don't speak. It isn't too late. You will be a little state with one ship. Alquist will build us a house, and you shall rule over us. Madam Helena, Fabry's right. Oh, stop, stop! Good. I don't mind beginning all over again. That suits me right down to the ground. And this little state of ours could be the center of future life. A place of refuge where we could gather strength. Why, in a few hundred years, we could conquer the world again. You believe that even today? Yes. Amen. You see, Madam Helena, we're not so badly off. Where's Old Rossum's manuscript? In your strongbox, of course. Someone has stolen it. Impossible. Who has stolen it? I did. Where did you put it? Harry, I'll tell you everything. Only forgive me. Where did you put it? This morning, I burnt the two copies. Burnt them? Where? In the fireplace? For heaven's sake, Harry. Nothing. Nothing but ashes. Wait, what's this? Let's see. By adding biogen to... That's all. Is that part of it? Yes. God in heaven. Then we're done for. Get up, Helena. Then you've forgiven me. Get up, child. I can't bear it. Please don't torture us. Harry, what have I done? Don't. Madam Helena. Gall, you couldn't draw up Rossum's formula from memory? It's out of the question. Even with my recent experiments, I couldn't work without referring to the formula. It's extremely complicated. Try. All our lives depend upon it. Without experiments, it's impossible. And with experiments? It might take years. Besides, I'm not old Rossum. God in heaven, God in heaven. So then this was the greatest triumph of the human intellect. These ashes. Harry, what have I done? Why did you burn it? I've destroyed you. God in heaven. Helena, why did you do it, dear? I wanted all of us to go away. I wanted to put an end to the factory and everything. It was so awful. What was awful? That children had stopped being born. Because human beings were not needed to do the work of the world, that's why. Is that what you were thinking of? Well, perhaps in your own way you were right. Wait a bit. Good God, what a fool I am not to have thought of it before. What? Five hundred and twenty millions in banknotes and checks. Half a billion in our safe. They'll sell for half a billion. For half a billion, they'll- Are you mad, Busman? I may not be a gentleman, but for half a billion- Where are you going? Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Good God, for half a billion, anything can be bought. They stand there as if turned to stone, waiting as if something dreadful could be wrought by their silence. The spirit of the mob. Yes. It hovers above them like a quivering of the air. Oh, God. Dr. Gall, this is ghastly. There's nothing more terrible than the mob. The one in front is their leader. Which one? Point him out. The one at the edge of the dock. This morning I saw him talking to the sailors in the harbor. Dr. Gall, that's Radius. Yes. Radius? Radius? Could you get him from here, Fabry? I hope so. Try it, then. Good. Favory, don't shoot him. He's their leader. Fire! Favory, I beg of you. Very well. It was Radius's life I spared. Do you think that a robot can be grateful? Busman's going out to them. He's carrying something. Papers. That's money. Bundles of money. What's that for? Surely he doesn't want to sell his life. Busman, have you gone mad? He's running up to the railing. Busman! Busman! Busman, come back! He's talking to the robots. He's showing them the money. He's pointing to us. He wants to buy us off. He'd better not touch that railing. Uh, Now he's waving his arms about. Busman, come back! 
Busman, keep away from that railing. Don't touch it. Damn you. Quick, switch off the current. current has killed him the first one dead with half a billion by his side all honor to him he wanted to buy us life do you hear a roaring like wind like a storm the dynamo is still going but people are still there it was a great thing to be a man. There was something immense about it. For man's thought and man's power came this life. Our last hope. Man's power. May it keep watch over us. Man's power. Yes. A torch to be given from hand to hand, from age to age, forever. The end. The electric works have fallen. In here, Helena. Now, quickly. Who will be on the lower doorway? I will. Who on the stairs? I will. You go with her. The ante room? I will. Have you got a revolver? Yes, but I won't shoot. What will you do then? Die. I'll stay here. Go to her, Harry. Yes, in a second. Confound it! Go to her! Goodbye. Now for a barricade. Quickly. The damn devils, they've got bombs. I must put up a defense. Even if... Even if... Don't give in, Ball. I mustn't give in without a struggle. Finish them all. Yes. Yes yes, yes. 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 He didn't shoot. Shall we kill him? No. Leave him. He is a man. He works with his hands like the robots. Kill me. You will work. You will build for us. You will serve us. Robots of the world, the power of man has fallen. A new world has arisen. The rule of the robots march. <laughs> Oh God, shall I never find it? Never. Gaul, Halamaya, Fabry, how were the robots made? Why did you leave not a trace of the secret? Lord, if there are no human beings left, at least let there be robots. At least the shadow of man. Oh, if I could only sleep. Dare I sleep before life has been renewed? Night again. Are the stars still there? Of what use are the stars when there are no human beings? Nothing. No, 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 I must find it. I must search. I must never stop. Never stop. Search. Search. Who is it? Master, the Committee of Robots is waiting to see you. I can see no one. It is the Central Committee, Master. Just arrived from abroad. Well, well, send them in. No time, so little done. What do you want? Be quick, I have no time. Master, the machines will not do the work. We cannot manufacture robots. We have striven with all our might. We've obtained a billion tons of coal from the earth. Nine million spindles are running by day and by night. There's no longer room for all we've made. This we've accomplished in one year. For whom? For future generations, so we thought. But we cannot make robots to follow us. The machines produce only shapeless clods. The skin will not adhere to the flesh, nor the flesh to the bones. Eight million robots have died this year. Within twenty years, none will be left. Tell us the secret of life. Silence is punishable with death. Kill me, then. Through me, the governments of the robots of the world command you to deliver up Rossum's formula. Name your price. We will give you the earth. We will give you the endless possessions of the earth. Make your own conditions. I have told you to find human beings. There are none left. I told you to search in the wilderness, upon the mountains. We have sent ships and expeditions without number. 
They have been everywhere in the world. There is not a single human left. <sighs> not even one? Why did you destroy them? We had learnt everything and could do everything. It had to be. We had to become the masters. Slaughter and domination are necessary if you would be human beings. Read history. Teach us to multiply, or we perish. If you desire to live, you must breed like animals. You made us sterile. We cannot beget children. Therefore, teach us how to make robots. Why do you keep us from the secret of our own increase? It is lost. It was written down. It was burnt. I am the last human being, robots, and I do not know what the others knew. Then make experiments. Evolve the formula again. I tell you, I cannot. I am only a builder. I work with my hands. I have never been a learned man. I cannot create life. Try. Try. If you only knew how many experiments I have made already. Then show us what we must do. The robots can do anything that human beings show them. I can show you nothing. Nothing I do will make life proceed from these test tubes. Experiment, then, on live robots. Experiment, then, on us. It would kill you. You shall have all you need. A hundred of us. A thousand of us. No. No. Stop. Stop. I tell you to take live bodies. Find out how we are made. Am I to commit murder? See how my finger shakes. I cannot even hold the scalpel. No. No. I will not. Take live bodies. Live bodies. Have mercy, robots. Live bodies. <sighs> you will have it. Into the dissecting room with you, then. Ah, you are afraid of death. I? Why should I be chosen? So you will not. I will. Strip him. Lay him on the table. God, give me strength. God, give me strength. If only this murder is not in vain. Ready? Begin. God, give me strength. No. No, I will not. I cannot. The robots are stronger than you. Oh, Lord, let not mankind perish from the earth. The man has fallen asleep, Primus. Yes, I know. Look, Helena. All these little tubes. What does he do with them? He experiments. Don't touch them. I've seen him looking into this. That is a microscope. Look, Primus. What are all these figures? That is the book the old man is always reading. I do not understand those things. Primus. What? The sun is rising. I believe this is the most important thing in the world, Helena. This is the secret of life. Oh, Primus. Don't bother with the secret of life. What does it matter to you? Come and look quick. What is it? See how beautiful the sun is rising? I feel so strange today. It's as if I was in a dream. I feel an aching in my body and my heart all over me. Primus, perhaps I'm going to die. Do you not sometimes feel that it would be better to die? You know, perhaps even now we are only sleeping. Last night in my sleep, I again spoke to you. In your sleep? Yes, we spoke a strange new language. What about? I did not understand it myself, and yet I know I have never said anything more beautiful. And when I touched you, I could have died. Even the place was different from any other place in the world. I, too, have found a place, Primus. It is very strange. Human beings dwelt there once, but now it is overgrown with weeds. What did you find there? A cottage, and a garden, and two dogs. They licked my hands, Primus, and their puppies. Oh, Primus, take them in your arms and fondle them and think of nothing and care for nothing else all day long. And when I am there in the garden, I feel there may be something. What am I for, Primus? I do not know, but you are beautiful. What, Primus? You are beautiful, Helena. And I am stronger than all the robots. Am I beautiful? Of what use is it to be beautiful? Look, your head is different from mine. So are your shoulders and your lips. Oh, your hair is must. I will smooth it. No one else feels to my touch as you do. 
Do you not sometimes feel your heart beating suddenly, Helena? And think how something must happen? What could happen to us, Primus? Look at yourself. <laughs> Laughter? Laughter? Human beings? Who has returned? Who are you? The robot Primus. What? A robot? Who are you? The robotess Helena. What? You are timid? Shy? Let me see you, robotess. Sir, do not frighten her. What? You would protect her? Laughter? Timidity? Protection? I must test you further. Take the girl into the dissecting room. Why? I wish to experiment on her. Upon Helena? Of course. Don't you hear me? Or must I call someone else to take her in? If you do, I will kill you. Kill me? Kill me, then. What will your future be? Sir, take me. I am made on the same day as she is. Take my life, sir. No, no, you shall not. Wait, girl, wait. Do you not wish to live, then? Not without her. I will not live without her. Very well. I will use you into the dissecting room with you. Primus. Primus. Child. Child, you can weep. Tears. What is Primus to you? One Primus more or less in the world? What does that matter? I will go myself. Where? Into the dissecting room? Yes. In there? To be cut. Let me pass, Primus. Let me pass. You shall not go in there, Helena. If you go in there and I do not, I will kill myself. I will not let you. Man, you shall kill neither of us. Why? We... We belong to each other. Go. Adam. Eve. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs>